Hey everybody, I've got a really fun one for you today because we are doing a POV driving experience in the new Mercedes-Benz Sprinter. And I do mean new because this fan is equipped with an all new powertrain that's different from the 2022 Sprinter we have spent so much time in. And in this video, we're gonna do a full walk around and then get it on the road, get it on some dirt, get it on some asphalt and see how this new engine, new transmission and the new driveline perform. Now this Sprinter is a 144 wheelbase model with the high roof and of course all wheel drive. That's the big change for 2023 is that they've gone from four wheel drive in the previous model year to all wheel drive in this model year. And the big change is really going to be underneath the hood. So the previous gen sprinter had a three liter turbocharged diesel called the OM642. It made 188 horsepower and it made 225 pound feet of torque. For 2023, the all-wheel drive Sprinter has lost two cylinders. It's lost a full liter. This is a two liter four cylinder diesel now, of course turbocharged, but over 200 horsepower and we're talking 232 pound feet of torque. So like 211 horsepower, somewhere in that territory. It's called the OM654 and it's made it to a nine speed automatic. So the old model had seven gears. This new model has nine. And we'll talk about the big drivetrain changes here in a second because pretty substantial differences. Now this Sprinter is outfitted in a really unique way. So as we open up the door here, this is made by a company called Adventure Wagon. And there's tons of outfitted Sprinters on the road, but what Adventure Wagon specializes in is modularity. So super customizable. And what I love about this unit is you can set it up for adventures, you can set it up for camping and for weekend trips, and then you can tear all this stuff out in a matter of 10, 15 minutes and have use of the full van for hauling lumber and whatever you might need to do. Now, check out all the cool things we have in here. Right now we've got this bed set up, but if you wanted to, you could have bunks and have two sleeping platforms. We've got these really useful bins mounted here along these tracks to the ceiling. We've got seats in this model mounted to tracks on the floor. So if you wanted to carry nine, 10, 11 people, just buy more seats, fill it up. Down here, we've got a place for your ski gear. We also have a place for your mountain bikes and all of this is completely customizable via these rail systems. I love the bamboo ceiling up here. I think it looks really great ill-integrated built-in lights. Now the cost, it depends hugely on how much you want to do to your printer, but this model somewhere around the neighborhood of $35,000 for the outfit. Look at that though. It's pretty cool. Ski racks in this one, you know, push a couple levers. Those will go sliding out like that. Really super useful. Really, really cool. Now this one is rolling on a set of KO2 tires. So a sprinter out of the box will have your typical all season. This one has a proper all terrain mounted on method wheels. But apart from that, a couple of rock rails along the side you can see there using the stock Mercedes Benz suspension in the front. And I love this winch setup. It's a worn uh, VR winch, 12,000 pounds, fully synthetic. But I like how they haven't changed a whole bumper. It's just this front plate looks a lot more elegant than some setups out there. But now to the part you're all been wondering about, let's see how this new 2023 Sprinter drives. So hopping in the Sprinter, let's see what we're working with here. So obviously a very customizable interior, not only from an outfitting standpoint, but from all the options. So lots and lots and lots of things you can get in your Mercedes-Benz Sprinter, depending on how much you want to spend and what kind of options you're looking for. So this model has the small screen located here in the middle, but you can get spec it with the larger. We have climate control down here, single zone, not automatic. You still got to use the fan but um, very functional setup. And then we also have heated seats down here, plastic steering wheel, cruise control, but the MBUX system, even though the screen is pretty small, super usable, very uh, easy to navigate. Overall, a great system. And I love the full backup camera, 360 camera. Even with that front winch mount, you don't get any intrusion there, which is really well engineered. So the sound of this engine, let's see, what do we think? Lower the window here a little bit. Very quiet at idle, almost no vibration. So it definitely sounds like a diesel when you're revving it window down, but with window up, wow, it almost sounds like a gas engine and it revs to the moon. Look at that red line there, over 4,000 RPM red line. So I mentioned big changes to the drive line. The old Sprinter had a two range transfer case, so high and low range. The new Sprinter has ditched the low range and now is only the high range essentially, right? But uh, 
what Mercedes has done is actually geared first gear a lot lower than the old one. So first gear with a nine speed is roughly equivalent to first gear in the old one with the low range. So you don't really sacrifice any of that slow speed power delivery. And power delivery really was the big issue I had with that three liter V6 diesel. I've spent thousands of miles in those. I've actually driven sprinters on a couple of continents now. And the big issue with that engine is, especially up here altitude in Colorado, you would hit the accelerator and then you have to wait. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, and then you get a big surge of torque, and then you'd have to wait again in the next gear. And it really made it hard to drive smooth, and it was almost alarming merging on two major roadways with that old setup. Now, the new one, I'm curious how it's going to perform. We're up here at 8,500, 9,000 feet above sea level, so we are really pushing the capability of this thing. And if you look up this road, that right there is a 10, 12 degree slope. I'm going to come to a complete stop. And I'm just going to hit the throttle, leave everything and drive in three, two, one, full throttle. So small delay, but I can tell you off the bat, the acceleration difference between the two liter and the three liter is profound, not in terms of overall zero to 60, but the power delivery. And you'll also notice as I'm going up this super steep grade, the transmission is automatically keeping me right there about 2,750 RPM. So if I do have to pass someone, I just ease out of that accelerator, you get a little bit of turbo whistle and off you go. This is such a more drivable van. It's so much more pleasant. It's so much easier to drive smooth and this nice speed not only has more ratios to keep that engine in its power band but it's also far smarter so in previous gen sprinters coming up this road where I've overheated a lot of vehicles by the way because it's so steep you really want to use the paddles but on this new one it's doing such a good job of not trying upshift there we have full throttle by the way still pulling hard and it pulls hard well up to 4,000 rpm so unlike a lot of diesels that kind of fall on their face around 2,700 3,000 this little engine pulls really 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 strong up to 4,000 so on the road, power, passing power um, and acceleration feels so much more adequate than the previous generation. But let's try something a little bit unique because I'm going to make a ride up here. We're going to go on a Sugarloaf Mountain Road. This road's closer to 14, 15 degrees uh, incline. And we're going to test this all-wheel drive system and see how this thing rides. Now, this is perfect sprinter territory, right? They're not much rock crawler sprinters for the most part because the articulation isn't there. The, uh, the, the weight is just a little bit too high. But in this terrain is really where they strive. And this new engine is no exception. So um, we're going nice and slow now, 13, 14 miles an hour. And once again, look at that transmission holding me right at 2,000. So if I did have to accelerate to make it over a berm, I could. Coming up to a crazy local here in a CRV. A lot of locals live up here. Um, and uh, yeah, that's a, that's a long commute back to Boulder for, for a bottle of milk. But um, anyways, let's make this really tight turn here. And I'm going to stop and we're going to see if we can accelerate up this really gnarly hill. Like I said, probably 12 degrees here, even though it doesn't look like it on camera. Stopping on the washboard. Going to ease onto the accelerator. Torque converter is holding us. And there you go. Right, right off the bat, we didn't have to wait. And then the previous sprinter, especially in high range, a road like this, you would really have to select low range because it just didn't have that low speed torque delivery. Let's try first gear. I'm gonna hold it in first. So there's five miles an hour indicated. Yeah, it feels really good. And it'll actually let you hold that gear above 3,000, 4,000 RPM coming up there, right up to red line. And then we can manually shift. It's not trying to take control either. Now the steering on this vehicle has gone to electric power steering. It's a little bit lighter, a little bit less tiring uh, for long distance road trips. I think it was a pretty good change overall and um, not super communicative, but it's a van. You know, what do you really expect? This road is rough, 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 rough. Leaf springs in the rear, so we're getting a little bit of bounce in the rear. The front though is feeling very, very um, planted and not a lot of the, the road is being communicated through the front end of this vehicle. But we're still climbing here. Look at that trans holding us beautifully, 2,500. Oh, I'm in manual mode. Let's go back to automatic. Still holding us at 2,500. Haven't attempted the upshift. We are receiving some wheel slip here, but that's the cool thing about this model. There's no button you have to push to engage four-wheel drive. There's no button you have to push to engage low range. You simply just drive it as you would every day, even on terrain like this, and let the vehicle do its work. You can distribute torque front and back as the all-wheel drive system sees fit. And we are losing traction. I do feel the wheels bouncing up and down a little bit, but it's doing such a good job of maintaining and keeping forward momentum here. Really smooth engine. 
And this is where you really can't tell it's a diesel at all. And these higher RPMs, it just sings like a little four-cylinder gas engine. You know, you see a vehicle like this, you hear the word two-liter, and you think four-cylinder, and you're like, that's not going to be nearly the power I need on my everyday commute or even for my off-road adventures. But even on this rough and tumble dirt road at very high elevation, performing well, big bumps here now, engine temperature looking solid, not indicating any, any overheat from the engine temp or the trans temp. Cruising on up this hill. Got an upshift there as we go over the washboard hill. We'll try taking this turn, see how the stability feels. Uh, got some big bumps here. On the accelerator. Really smooth shift. This transmission is also much smoother than the old one. And I think we're about to cross the summit here into Roosevelt National Forest. And the only ones up here, except for maybe some side-by-sides. But yeah, I have to say, this is such an improvement over previous generations of Sprinter. Um, really like this a lot. Don't fret the loss of the low range. I think it's, uh, it really is fine in this vehicle. And check out uh, Adventure Wagon if you want a really unusual upfit. I think it's a pretty smart idea that not a lot of folks are doing in the industry. Well, guys, this has been Tommy. Thank you for joining me on this first ever POV drive. Let me know what you think of it in the comment section below if you want to do more. And we'll see you in the next video.